Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn, Breakwell. And in that corner, ignored by Millions, Steve Dosh, Rinko Lieber. Everybody, welcome to a well-planned out with a long production meeting preceding this recording edition of Wrong and Wronger. I am Steve, always prepare to leave us. He is James Buttcrack of Dawn Breakwell saying thank you for being the only one watching this episode. And James, we are in the throes of your recovery. Last week we missed an episode because uh, you were just hot on the heels of surgery. How's it going so far in the mending department? I'm, uh, I'm doing better at sitting in a chair, so I got that going for me. <laughs> Although I did, uh, I did manage to hurt my knee. I did not have surgery on my knee. I hurt my knee sitting in a chair for too long. So uh, chairs are not without their risk, but I'm, uh, I'm moving back in the right direction. I found, though, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I saw in your newsletter that you hurt your knee while writing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rough profession, okay? The workers' comp yeah. claims go often ignored and they're mocked, but you know what? <laughs> We're out there risking our bodies and our lives to put out content that nobody wants to read. So uh, let's, yeah. let's hear it for the, for the forgotten writers here. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's been uh, it's been an interesting uh, few days. I found out I'm kind of in a uh, a very non-exclusive club. After I, whenever I tell somebody I have uh, I had hernia surgery, there's about a thirty percent chance they'll say, "Oh yeah, I've got a hernia." They told me I needed surgery. I didn't get it. Like apparently, apparently, what? like yeah, apparently there's just all kinds of men walking around. Maybe women too. I don't know. I didn't. I've, I don't talk to too many women apparently. But uh, every dude I've told this story to, it's like a good chunk of them have hernias, and it's like you know, that's never going to get better, right? Like those things don't just get sucked back into your body. You either, <laughs> you either get surgery or they just keep getting worse. And apparently these guys have opted for the uh, the keep getting worse plan. I don't know what the end game is, but they're doing okay so far. So I guess, I guess we'll see. Wow, I I don't know much about sports hernias or yours are I guess inborn hernias, but I I would guess that they range from non-severe to more severe. And for you to have had three at once tells me that one of yours was pretty bad. Yeah, only one. I mean, there were three holes, but like there was only like body tissue sticking out of one of them. The other ones were just just hanging out, just minding their yeah, own business, sure. like they have my entire life. I only I only squeezed uh, squeezed things through one. So yeah, it's uh, so I mean, there's degrees. Wow, but like one yeah. one guy, yeah, one guy's was really really bad. He's like, yeah, I'll just there's no plan. I'll just just wait. It's like, <laughs> all right. I mean, I guess you could always, you know, get hit by a car beforehand, making the hernia surgery sure. pointless. You know, I'd feel pretty dumb if I like walked out tomorrow and got hit by a meteor. It's like, well, what did I? Sure. What I go through all that recovery for? But yeah, I mean, otherwise, planning to live a long and semi healthy life, I would I would think you'd want to get it treated. But I, I don't know. I'm not. Maybe I'm not dude enough to understand the logic. Boy, imagine how lucky that guy would be if he got hit by a car. Oh, he, he's he's living right if that happens. <laughs> you know, there are so many things. Like, everybody's like, you know, about you, you reap what you sow. Well, maybe you don't. Maybe you die stupidly <laughs> and accidentally for a completely unrelated cause, and you just get away with it. You never pay for the consequences of your stupid decisions. I mean, I, there, there's a certain appeal to that. I can I can see it. Wow, and yet you and I are paying week after week after week for this stupid decision, because here we are again. Yeah. Yeah, I have yet to escape any of my stupid decisions. They are always <laughs> hot on my heels, and I am not fast enough to outrun them. Now, you were saying you couldn't even sit upright. Is uh, is that kind of the case? Were you, like, prostrate the entire week? I, I mean, I could sit up and move around, but, like, I shouldn't do it for very long. So it, it has to do with, like, the direction of the swelling. So if I'm laying down or if I've got a pretty healthy slouch going, then the swelling is kind of horizontal and all things are good. Um, if I'm upright for too long, though, well, if, at the start, my abs just were dying and I just did not want to sit up or walk at all. Once the, once the abdominal region got a little bit stronger and a little bit less pain, it was about the swelling. And you don't want the swelling to 
go north south because when you're standing it only goes south and uh that's that's what i'm dealing with right now now that i'm up and moving around the world uh the swelling that I, I thought i was out of the woods on that it turns out i was not out of the woods i was like smack in the middle of the woods and uh remember, <laughs> remember that very disturbing hand illustrations i did last week the <laughs> Like that was two weeks ago, that, and I'm scarred from it still. Yeah, yes. that that's that's the zone we're in right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Does it hurt to laugh? No, no, it did at first. At first, it hurt to laugh. It hurt to cough. It hurt to breathe deeply. Now I can I can do all those things. Now it mostly just hurts to walk or to sit for too long. Those are kind of my uh, my two bugaboos at the moment. Wow, so you are, you're taking one for the team by being here among us today, James. Once again, I am sacrificing my body <laughs> for absolutely no reason. <sighs> well, that's for Judy P. Savage amusement, I'm sure. She did ask me on surgery week if there would be an episode, and I had to report, sadly, <laughs> no, there were not. And for once, it wasn't your fault, it was mine. No, you blamed me! Did I? I oh, that's right. Oh, I said it to you. I was so proud of that burn. Yes. yes I said I, I said it was your fault because I, I got a hernia carrying the heavy load of the show. <laughs> I was, God. was carrying you on my back every week. Man, I was, <laughs> I was witty on those painkillers. I should never stop, man. Yeah, somehow I got dragged into your misery, which I suppose is my sweet spot. So I'm kind of accustomed to it. But you had uh, you had some big news as well. We've been away for two weeks, but you were sending me text. You got a you got a new toy, a big expensive new toy that I costs did. as much as some houses. I, did I tell you what it cost in the text? No, maybe it was just heavily implied. But I I, I pieced together pretty good brackets for how much it cost. Uh, you, you'll be low. Yeah. No way. No, there's no way. Uh, I'll text you after the okay. show. I'll I think I'm I'm estimating that it cost about three times as much as my van, which is impressive. As your what? My van. What did your van cost? Uh, I think in the mid twenties. I think after all the trade ins and stuff. Ooh, you're pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing you, you must have told me how much it costs. I, not, I can't <laughs> imagine my powers of analysis are that good. <laughs> you're like Rain Man with knowing what John Deere products cost. <laughs> yes, we got a tractor, which uh, is brand new, and by the grace of God, it has a warranty, James. Oh, how how long? Yeah. Uh, five years, and uh, I'll be paying for it for the next seven years, so you can guess what's going to happen during that final two years. But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I get hit by a car at some <laughs> point so that I don't have to deal with those. If I just live good enough that uh, maybe uh, the Lord will have mercy on me and send like a, a Subaru just to mow me down in the middle of the highway. Ah, it would be a glorious day. I think you but, should be hoping the tractor runs you over so maybe you can get a lawsuit out of the deal. Maybe Mrs. Steve can come out ahead financially on this thing. Did I tell you what the tractor weighs? No, that I don't think you did. I would like you to venture a guess because it weighs more than a Subaru. I, I'd rather get hit by a car. Is it? Is it like four tons? Little north, it's four and a half, 9,000 really? pounds. I yeah. guess just, I wonder if that's intentional just for like pulling things. You need something heavy just for leverage. Well, yeah, we added 800 pounds by filling the back tires with fluid. So it's oh. because we have so many hills. You've got to have that thing dig in so that it can get enough traction to pull like accessories up hills. There's 800 pounds of fluid sloshing around in the tires. Yeah. And it's not sloshing. Like, it takes the place of air, so they're pressure-filled with fluid. So what happens if it springs a leak? Uh, exactly what you think happens. We just <laughs> watered a significant portion of the ranch. Man, <laughs> I don't it... even know if it's water in there. It's got to have antifreeze in it, so I I'm not sure what it is exactly, the mixture. And I I'm imagining those tires are not, uh, not cheap to change. You can't probably call uh, AAA and just have them come out there and do it for you. <laughs> Well, that that creates a whole new set of issues because uh, the, because this thing weighs so much, it's on a special and it's big, it's long, so it's uh, it's delivered on a special trailer. The trailer couldn't get into our driveway because of the pitch, 
So, and there's no shoulder, like we're on a part of the highway that's kind of bottlenecked because it goes through, uh, it, it's like skirting along the top of a hill and on both sides is a pretty steep ravine. Point is, the nearest place that could unload the tractor is about a mile from here, across the street. It, it's the country music star's property. They've got mm. uh, like a parking lot for people who are visiting and tours. So the, the flatbed had to go there, and he had to drive the tractor a mile on the open highway <laughs> to our place and then drive it up the driveway. So the point is, if anything goes wrong with the tractor and it needs service, which even normal service, I've got to drive it a mile on the highway to the country music star's place so that the flatbed can pick it up. But if the tractor is not operational, i.e. one of the tires goes flat or the engine has something go wrong with it, we need a mechanic to come to the ranch and fix it enough that it's able to go down the highway to get onto that flatbed and go to the service center. I, I just, it's like you're operating on the moon. Like there's so many logistical <laughs> challenges to get there. You're not, you're not on the moon. You're on top of a hill in Tennessee. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I know it shouldn't be, but it's the curse, James. You understand. Uh, you've known me for like seven years now, eight years now. Like you, you understand the curse. It's uh, it's remarkable because for the first like five years of whatever it is we've been doing here, like your bad luck was not a constant topic on this podcast. Like you, you <laughs> made bad choices, but you had a more or less normal life with just normal consequences, not catastrophic consequences from every decision you made. It's uh, I really enjoy this transformation. If anybody's had a good makeover in the last <laughs> few years, it's you. You're moving in the right direction. Well, I appreciate it. Although I have no festering holes in my body that need fixing immediately. This so is true. I, I can say I have my health, which you know, on some days is unfortunate. <laughs> I got to say, though, my surgeries are less expensive than your tractor. So I feel like I'm still coming out ahead. <laughs> yeah, the tractor itself was expensive, but we had to get we, we had to get two accessories right away. We had to get the front bucket. Mm -hmm. And uh, that thing adds a thousand pounds to the tractor. And then we had to get like a, a mower, a, a pull behind bat wing bush hog mower. So that added a significant expense. And then the other expense to the tractor was Mrs. Steve wanted a cabin, like a, like a cab, so that yeah. she can get air conditioning and heat and uh, satellite radio. So <laughs> I was out mowing, listening to the Cubs game over the weekend it was it was glorious james in air conditioning it uh yeah i had the air on it was warm over the weekend yes that uh actually that doesn't sound so bad i mean that that might legitimately be worth the money i mean if you have a vehicle without air conditioning you're basically riding a horse like it is not an acceptable thing so yeah it, i've got to think long term mrs steve made the right call there a little bit of money now for permanent air conditioning it's the right move. But, of course, the air conditioning is going to break, and you're never going to take it to get it fixed. So, I mean, <laughs> enjoy it for the two months you got it. I'll tell you what, man. On the BAM, I, I, it was like I was a fish fillet on the broiler. Like, it was not pleasant to be out there in direct sunlight for four or five hours at a time. However, there was airflow on the BAM. In that tractor, if the air goes out, the windows open like that much, but for the most part, you're going to suffocate in that cab. So some oh. air is going to be a necessity. I didn't even uh, I didn't even think of that. Now, how, how fast does it go? Because I'm imagining your uh, mower deck is a lot bigger than on the BAM. So is it faster overall or is the tractor itself slower so it balances out? No, I'll tell you what, mm. man. So the BAM was a 60 horsepower diesel. The tractor is a 65 horse. And so I thought, eh. That, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of power difference. I don't understand how they put that much power in a single engine with hydraulic compression, but we, that bush hog mower deck on the back is sick, man. We can mow in about half the time as what the BAM was doing. The one exception is that giant bat wing mower can't get real close to the trees, or it probably can, but I don't want to run over my trees and I'm not real good at it yet. The BAM could kind of cut right on the tree. So we have to take the riding mower out if we want to do manicure and go around the trees. But otherwise, other than that little added extra expense of time, that thing is a mofo. That cuts <laughs> like a banshee. I'm really happy with it. 
Wait, the, the tractor itself is 65 horsepower or the mower portion yeah. 65? The, the mower doesn't have power. It gets, well, you know this, the mower gets its power from the tractor. I don't, I don't understand how that can be. Like even a standard minivan's like a hundred or 120 horsepower. I mean, there are, there are off the, you know, there are muscle cars out there that are 600 horsepower yeah. and they're pulling like, I mean, it, it, the, the car isn't even a ton. How on earth is 65 horsepower moving four and a half tons? And Man, pulling stuff? I don't, I don't understand it either. But we only have that one accessory and the bucket. We haven't, we tried using the bucket once. We got to practice a little more with it. We have some tree stumps to move. But the, the point is that, uh, well, hell, I forgot my point. What was I about to say? Oh, that there are a ton of different accessories for like real farming, like tillers and balers. I don't think our tractor's big enough to run a baler. You need more power for those. Uh, my uh, dairy farmer friend was saying you need at least a hundred horsepower tractor for those, but still, uh, this thing has insane power, and I don't understand how it works because you're right. A Corvette motor has a whole lot more horsepower, but somehow this tractor motor is able to push a lot more sheer power. Wow, man, have you uh, have you done anything stupid with it yet? Pulling something heavy, lifting something big. I mean, it's only a matter of time. You're a guy with a big machine. Like you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> push the limit more than you should. I will say, and I was texting you about this, we have a story that I am not allowed to tell. Oh. But uh, yes, yes, there was a learning curve that uh, was unfortunate, but it's it, we, 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 we figured stuff out, James. But the tractor is still intact and did not have to be hauled away to be repaired, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can kill that thing. I'm going to knock on wood when I say, but... The BAM felt like porcelain china, and the tractor feels like a freaking tractor. Like, uh, man, that thing, it's effortless. Like, uh, going through the blackberries, Mrs. Steve went around and did some real bush hogging with small trees and blackberries. It would have taken two hours with the BAM, going back and forth, back and forth. This sucker, one pass, it was like a, a two-blade razor. One pass kind of got most of it. The next pass wiped everything out, and it is clean cut right down to the level of the grass. Trees, blackberries, it's just glorious. I don't know why we didn't do this in the first place. Actually, yeah, I do. They didn't have inventory during COVID. But, man, I wish they would have because this would have saved me so much heartbreak. I don't understand your war <clears throat> with the blackberries. I know we've talked about it before. I know what ripped off your hat and your face at one point, but yeah. blackberries are delicious. Nature is giving you a very expensive fruit. Have you ever tried to buy blackberries in the store? They are not cheap. <laughs> they sell the, the vines at Walmart for seven bucks each that you plant. And I'm like, we literally have hundreds of thousands of those on our property and we can't mow them down fast enough. Like, uh, man, I wish we could monetize. Well, we probably could. We put our minds to it, but we don't want to put that much work into it. But I, I think, do, there is a patch that I've saved to harvest. I got a bucket of blackberries out of it last year. We just can't eat that many more. Man, sounds like you need to, uh, to hire some people. Come out there, start a blackberry farming operation. You'll be good to go. <laughs> you can pay off that farming. I think, I think uh, a little pint of blackberries goes for two or three bucks. I mean, they are, they are an expensive fruit. Yeah, and out here, there's no pesticide. There, you just eat them right off the vine while you're picking them. It really is cool. But you, you've got a, a Carol Hargrave sent me gloves that go up to my elbows for <laughs> picking blackberries so that I don't have them rip my forearms off like they tried to do with my face. It's a risky business, James. You know, I bet per hour picking blackberries would pay better than either writing or psychology and definitely better than the zero dollars we make at podcasting. Like I just, I think you're putting your energy in the wrong spot. Huh? Boy, now that you put it that way, I still don't agree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to venture into Satan's garden that often. Man, but you're just, you're throwing away money. I, I can't even, but I guess it probably at the very least, it attracts your stupid, uh, wilderness friends there the birds eat the blackberries i don't think anything else does the really? the deers eat do you know what parsimons are i have heard the word but no i could not draw a picture of one uh they're like little kind of citrusy fruit but we've got a lot of those trees and uh 
some of the ones that the deers couldn't reach, I was able to harvest the parsimons. And people told me if you eat them too early, they're super bitter and awful. If you hit them in the sweet spot, they're very sweet and delectable. And uh, the deers will like rip branches off <laughs> eating these things. They love them. But mm. I, I was able to grab a couple for us and they're fabulous. But really? uh, it's that we compete with the wildlife for those. We really don't compete for the blackberries is my point. That uh, the birds sometimes eat them, and then the snakes hang out in the blackberries to eat the birds. But for the most part, we have so many, like the birds can't even eat them fast enough. There's enough to go around for everyone. We haven't uh, we haven't heard a snake story in a while. I wonder if all your, your machines breaking down and coming in, if you finally driven them out for good like St. Patrick on the on an island. You uh you have made so much of a ruckus that they don't want anything to do with you anymore. I mean that that would be a rare win for you. I wish. The problem is we're just coming out of like 5 months of cold weather and snakes are cold blooded so they mm. can't move around in the cold. They, the the stories will return, James, as the weather starts to turn. You know, they're going to have a hard time getting you, though. Now that you're up in that air-conditioned cab, sealed yeah, off from nature true. completely, <laughs> uh, you might as well be well, working in an office. They're not going to get you. I know. It's, I'm spoiled. I'm going to get office hands. Mrs. Steve was a little bit disappointed that the windows don't really open to where she can hang a gun out and shoot an armadillo if she has to. <laughs> so, they, uh, I'm sure John Deere has a gun port add-on you could have you option <laughs> for. She was going to get a glass cutter and cut one of those little circles in it, like uh, from Mission Impossible, and then have it on a hinge so she can open it up like a little turret and fire if she needs to. But Man. otherwise, you're right. Like, uh, if anything comes at us, uh, it's going to have a hard time getting to us. Yeah, you have. Uh, you went out and you settled the nature, and now you have completely separated yourself from nature. Your progression back to city dweller is complete. Ah, oh, I wish. There is so much to do, James. But you'll see when you come out here to work and uh, get out in the blackberry fields and you tie a kerchief around your brow and then you sing old-timey songs like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot as you're working. It, it'll I, work out. We'll, I we'll get paid. I trust that you will complete your task of killing the blackberries. It's, it's the one productive thing <laughs> on your entire cursed mound. So, of course, you're attacking it with vigor. I mean, what else is giving you any kind of useful yield? You've got <clears throat> grass. You've got turkeys that are just takers, not givers. I mean, you're not, <clears throat> you're not getting anything from this. You're just giving, man. There were turkeys right behind me when we started. The, the things don't even run away anymore. It's so insulting, James, that unless I'm out there in the woods with my turkey call, and then there's like an arc about 100 yards away that they walk back and forth because they know I can't reach them with a shotgun from there. And uh, it's just, it, th this whole man versus nature thing is getting me down. But I, I'm waiting for deer season. I, I think this is going to be my season, James. So just just to be clear, you made it through the entire turkey season on a property full of turkeys and killed exactly how many turkeys? First of all, <laughs> turkey season's not over with. And second of all, there was one right off my porch the other day, and I uh, sent a picture to Mrs. Steve, and she's like, get it! And so I loaded the gun and snuck around the corner of the house, and he stood there behind the HVAC unit and looked at me as if he was challenging me to shoot. I would have gotten some nice turkey meat, but also I'd have been out of $6,000 HVAC unit. <laughs> so by the time I, I swear to God, this is the way it happened. By the time I came around the other side of the house, it looked at me and then made a beeline to the woods. Like uh, I should have cut it off from the woods, but I was afraid of shooting toward my house. That doesn't <laughs> usually end well. So the turkeys know, James, that's my point. I'm going to get a turkey at some point. Maybe not this year because I'm still figuring out what they can see and not see. But deer season, that's going to be my jam, man. You actually you actually like the deer. I feel like this is the ultimate betrayal. You've befriended them for like two straight years, and now you're going to try to murder one. Which, I mean, in their defense, you're not going to actually hit one. So I guess they're perfectly safe. But like the, the ill intention is there. <laughs> I will say, I think I said this a few weeks ago, we made a mistake by not harvesting any last, like they haven't been harvested for several years and the population is starting to get out of control. 
So we do need to take a few out and invite some. Some of my Amish friends are going to come out too and, and harvest some. So we're going to try to thin the herd a little bit so that we don't overpopulate the deers out here. What's the bag limit there? <laughs> it's three a day for about a month and a half. Three a day per person? Yeah. Who, who could so possibly out, shoot more than that? Why even have well, a limit at that point? who could eat more than that? That's the point. Like, uh, the, the, the Wildlife Resource Agency is like, we got to take some of these deers out. And if you're in a chronic wasting disease area, which is almost knocking on our door here, I don't think there is a bag limit. I think for every one you bag, you get another tag. So it's, uh, they're, they're really trying to take the deer population down out here. Well, when you uh, when you shoot your imaginary deer, I would like some imaginary <laughs> venice, and I would enjoy that very much. I know you love it. We're having some tonight. Mrs. Ooh. Steve is thawing some. Thank God her dad can shoot straight. But we, we got to get going. Uh, I, I could cry about this all day, but you don't care because you're still healing. Are you ready to go? I am right. I can't believe you paused. <laughs> Usually you start on your outro and it's like a log flume. There's no getting off. And if I stand on, I'm just going to get run over. So I was going to let you do your thing, not step on wow. your toes for once, but it seems 500 episodes in, we still don't understand each other's cadences. So this is me <laughs> formally renouncing my right to say anything else Thank on this you. podcast. Thank you for that clarity. Well, this has been another very clearly communicated episode of Wrong and Wronger. We hope you learned a lot more than you ever wanted to know about male anatomy and hernias. And if you didn't, just listen to the most previous episode to this one. You'll lose your breakfast. Until we meet again and talk a little bit more about James's innards, this is Steve Lee, Dr. Steve for James the Exploding and Falling Apart Unicorn saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening, go shoot a turkey this weekend, and remember two wrong. Songs can make a right. <laughs>